Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Committee of the Whole meeting, DeKalb City Council, January 14, 2019. Prior to the start of the meeting, I would like to remind anyone who would like to participate in either our Committee of the Whole meeting tonight or in our regular City Council meeting, which will begin at 6 o'clock this evening, to fill out a speaker request form. They're in the foyer in the back of the room. Kindly give those to our City Clerk, Lynn Fazekas, who will get those to me, and I'll try to get you on at the proper time. With that being said, I'd ask uh, City Clerk Fazekas to call the order and the roll call, please. Jacobson. Finucan. Here. Fagan. Here. Noreko. Here. Verbig. Here. Favor. Here. Smith. Here. Six present. There is only one item on tonight's agenda, and that is the state of the city address. So unless I hear from one of the councilmen that they would like to add something to the agenda for the committee of the whole meeting, I am going to indicate that the agenda uh, should be approved as printed, and I would like a motion to that effect, so please. Moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Finucan, seconded by Alderman Fagan, that we approve the agenda of the Committee of the Whole Meeting. Any discussion? Roll call. Fagan. Yes. Noreko? Yes. Verbeck? Yes. Favor? Yes. Finucan? Yes. Smith? Yes. Here. Six I. Thank you. I have no speaker request forms for anyone who would like to speak under public participation during the Committee of the Whole meeting. Again, we'll have another opportunity during the City Council meeting, which starts at 6 o'clock. Now, for the one item on the agenda for the Committee of the Whole, let me get somewhat organized here. And I would ask you to bear with me, and I am going to have certain uh, pictures and slides on the screen so if you are in a position where you can't see the screen I'd advise you to perhaps uh, see one and for the folks at home uh, I'm going to try to go through this as slowly as possible so that we have a, a fairly really good uh, choreographed uh, state of the city. 2019 is going to be a better year I can just feel it. To say that 2018 tossed us some challenges would be an understatement. Believe me, I can understand why folks questioned why anyone would want to be mayor or an alderman during the last year. But I can report tonight that I believe this group comprising the city council is raring to face the new year with renewed energy and optimism. And while I can't promise that we'll agree on everything, I can assure you that our dialogue will always be geared with one goal in mind, and that is that the decisions we make are in the best interests of the residents of DeKalb. Tonight, I've been asked to provide a state of the city. While I admit to being a positive individual, I will never apologize for being this community's number one cheerleader. Having said that, I'll also be as candid as I can when we have problems. Simply put, let's celebrate our successes while owning up to our shortcomings. This evening, please allow me to review the good and the not so good and to look forward on what's on the horizon during the coming months. 
To make this a tad more interesting, uh, I'm going to utilize some photos. A picture sometimes is worth a thousand words, they say, and in this instance may serve, these pictures may serve to jostle our recollection of the myriad of happenings in our community during 2018. Before our pictorial journey begins, I'd like to thank the hardworking employees of the city of DeKalb. These fine folks have suffered through a budget dilemma that has hindered our ability to manage effectively. Foremost in our trials has been the lack of staff leadership from the top. The departure of our city manager in early 2018 was followed by three interim city managers, all of whom performed while being keenly aware that this council was determined to find a new permanent city manager. We found one. And in the days ahead, Bill Nicholas will do what this mayor and what our city council has asked him and expect him to do. Lay the groundwork, bolstered with a realistic budget. Let me repeat, a realistic budget that will allow us to manage this city effectively. It will not be easy. What will be easy now is to share some of what we've accomplished during the past year. And our first picture provides a good start. As I review some of what's new in DeKalb, we realize that we must also appreciate the old. Isn't this a great picture? Almost a microcosm of our city at First Street and Lincoln Highway. Now let's take a look at some of what's new during the past year. Few issues Re received as much discussion than City Council's decision to change refuse vendors. No question that waste management had served this city well for over 30 years, but the integrity of the bidding system helped us to decide. Lakeshore Recycling Systems has experienced a few glitches early on, but things have seemed to settle in pretty well. Another new initiative sets up a competitive stance between an old vendor, Comcast, and Metronet. Fiber is currently being installed in certain sections of town, and DeKalb's progress into being more of a smart city, I think, is assured. Now, much like the rollout of our garbage disposal scenario, Metronet's work deals with a lot of digging and a lot of dirt and a lot of mud. Progress does not come without these things. So I would ask patience, please. Several of our initiatives involve collaboration with NIU. Perhaps the most comprehensive is taking the final steps in consolidating the VAC and the Husky Line bus systems. This all started in earnest in August and has rolled out pretty well. Especially gratifying has been our efforts to expand routes to include planned additional service to Park 88 employers. Just last week, I viewed our transit systems online tracking capabilities showing real-time locations of the vehicles. Now perhaps for some of our younger folks, eh, no big thing. For me, that was amazing to see where that bus is going along. So congratulations to Tim and Marcus and others. Cornfest provided the opportunity to start up free Wi-Fi in our downtown area, uh, working with a vendor digital lobby and with 
financial assistance from Northern, we can now see the potential of data gathering coupled with internet access for citizens and visitors alike. <laughs> we want to also involve local businesses in terms of being IT vendors or Wi-Fi sponsors. Tremendous potential. For those arriving in our community, as well as for us who travel about locally, there should be no doubt that this is a college town. And this banner initiative between Northern and DeKalb has provided visible proof of the pride we have. Proudly DeKalb. And wow, when someone who has not been downtown for some time, it's taken on a new look. The cornerstone of downtown redevelopment has been, well, Cornerstone, a John Pappas project bolstered by the use of TIF. It joined Sundog IT, just a block away, as the two largest downtown improvements. Those two businesses continue to fill their spaces while adding to the new look that downtown DeKalb is taking on. Quickly, very quickly, here are a few other new points of pride. The Beef Shack on West Lincoln Highway. Duncan on East Lincoln Highway. And Walmart on Sycamore Road. Good examples of independent owners, small franchises, and huge national chains. New construction continues throughout our community. Here, a concept drawing of Plaza de Kelb, a mixed-use development with commercial housing at 2nd and Lincoln. Uh, now, in talking with developer John Pappas last week, he expects work on the corner parcel to begin this spring. This follows on the expected opening in a few weeks of Jamra Restaurant and adjoining professional office suites. Adding to the excitement is the announced expansion of Aldi Grocery in our community as they move from the west side of Sycamore Road across the street to the former J.C. Penney building. They'll be joined by a national fitness business moving into the former Carson's store. And in another shopping area, a major fast food chain will be making an announcement soon on its new construction on Sycamore Road. It took considerable effort with significant roadway improvements on Bethany Road, but this new multi-million dollar investment into our health care community is huge. Opening in November, the Northwestern Medicine Wellness Center is an attractive addition to the quality of life here in DeKalb County. This project is solid evidence of how important a national player like Northwestern Medicine is to the DeKalb Sycamore community. Other important projects started during 2018 and should provide the catalyst for future growth. <clears throat> Ground is expected to be broken later this spring on Annie Glidden Road where Hilton will have a Barb City presence with its Home Two Suites Hotel. I must say that this project too was one of our more controversial developments during the past year. My vote may have decided the fate of this and it was not an easy decision given the outpouring of neighborhood sentiment. I took a look at the pros and the cons and I was comfortable with the decision that this City Council made. Just adjacent to the Noel subdivision is Devonair Farms, which has been the catalyst for, finally, some residential housing starts. As a matter of fact, we ended the year with over 23 new housing permits, a considerable increase from what the last several years has seen. A good start for sure. 
extremely important to our economy is the continued expansion of new industrial development in Park 88. As a municipality, we have to be multifaceted in working with potential businesses. We need to work with the county, as Peace Road is a feeder from the interstate. We need to be cognizant of potential assistance from the state of Illinois. We will continue to work assigned partners like the DeKalb County Economic Development Corporation and NIU as we market our workforce, educational and quality life attrib attributes to prospective employers. This is a very competitive marketplace and it will be in this city's best interest to maintain and to grow the quality that 3M, Nestle, Target, and Panduit now bring to that area. An added incentive to our toolbox is the designation this year of three tracts of land all adjacent to NIU as opportunity zones. Now this should allow investors to find these areas very attractive for development. Bolstering this was the announcement of the planned Northern Illinois Center for Community Sustainability, a $22.9 million facility to be built on the west edge of the university's campus. This initiative should prove huge to not only NIU, but to the collaboration with the University of Illinois system for Northern, but for the city of DeKalb as well. Finally, in the area of development is the recent decision by City Council to preliminarily approve nearly five and a half million dollars in tax increment financing dollars to three projects. The major investment has been the culmination of years of discussion. Finally, it appears that the Egyptian theater will be equipped with the air conditioning that it needs to provide programming year-round. Another development already in progress has been the hometown sports bar downtown where a small TIF distribution will be of assistance. The third is really ambitious uh, but could prove extremely attractive to rehabbing the old St. Mary's Hospital structure on Fisk Avenue into a boutique hotel. Now we're anxious to get further construction plans, but this private development project's concept proved to be very enticing to this city council, so stay tuned. Before I leave the subject of TIF, I have to provide a few comments regarding how utilization how, of TIF by this city over the last 20 years resulted in a contentious atmosphere with the Joint Review Board, or JRB. During my first meeting last September, the question of how TIF dollars had been used by the city for administrative expenses was raised. At that time, it appeared to be a legitimate question. I further learned that not one of our taxing district partners had ever questioned the city before. Over the succeeding weeks, our attempts to answer these questions were publicly expressed in concert with DeKalb County State's Attorney Rick Amato, who had been asked to opine on the JRB scenario. As part and parcel of discussions with our JRB partners, the idea of the city conducting a forensic audit was suggested. It was the state's attorney during a special news conference conducted in late December who agreed to work with the city in establishing the logistics of getting the audit done funded as a TIF expense. At this time, it appears that the JRB is comfortable with this and that the distributions for the aforementioned projects clearly fall within the proper TIF parameters. I appreciate this outcome, especially 
on the willingness of our state's attorney, Rick Amato, to provide a level-headed direction leading to a wider JRB participation with the city of DeKalb in the years ahead. Now changing course a bit, let's take a look at some improvement projects throughout the city. Infrastructure, streets. We've kicked this proverbial can down the road too much over the years and it's going to take some time to catch up. This year our major improvement project was in the historic Elwood neighborhood. It looks great. We'll see what our budget will allow in the future. We need to fill potholes as we plod forward too. We should be spending about $5 million on streets. Last year we spent $1.7 million. Well enough on streets, let's take a look at infrastructure on a slightly smaller pathway. The Kishwaukee Kiwanis multi-use pathway to be specific. Another example of great collaboration between state and local partners with cooperation from the feds and the railroad. Recently opened, this trail running under the Union Pacific and West Lincoln Highway links Prairie Park with the Lagoon area on NIU's campus. It's wonderful for biking and running and walking. Speaking of streets, another rollout that resulted in considerable discussion was our police department's coordination of the Safe Streets Initiative, translated by most as parking restrictions. This all grew out of this community's insistence that public safety was paramount in our community. As we engage folks in our Annie Glidden North revitalization, it was clear that we need to take cars off of some streets while tweaking the rules for residents and non-residents alike. As this slide depicts, other public safety measures undertaken during the past year has been increased LED lighting and improved ISO fire rating, police department participation in the Project HOPE program, which is a collaboration with other agencies in the fight against drugs, a grant helping to address the multitude of mental health issues in com uh, community policing, and a collaboration with Safe Passage to help in early intervention in domestic violence situations. As reported late last week in the media, Police Chief Gene Lowry has indicated that serious crime incidents once again saw a decrease in our city for the second consecutive year. However, I know our police force continues to be concerned by the oversupply of housing just north of the NIU campus and the resulting criminal activity in that area. This area has become known as Annie Glidden North. And it's there where a key initiative has taken over a full year to develop. We've called it the Annie Glidden North Revitalization Plan. We've gotten to know it simply as AGN. But this initiative has involved so many, has taken so much time, but has resulted in a more positive vibe. Starting as a 30-member task force over a year ago, as this community has taken a look at how to revitalize the Northwest Quadrant of our city. Annie Glidden North focused on four major areas. Transportation, infrastructure, and open space, community services, safety and security, and in housing and commercial, commercial development. From it, the top 10 implementation policies, priorities were established. I'm not going to go through all of this uh, that is contained on this slide, but it is significant. It is the meat of the matter for those interested in seeing what we'd like to see accomplished in that neighborhood. 
when these priorities are near the beginning of the entire AGN plan, and that's now on the city's website. There will be dollar signs attached to all these things, to all of these ideas. We'll be asking a wide variety of potential resources to help us implement the plan. So stay tuned. I want to give a special shout out tonight to the 30 members of the task force, some of whom are here to receive official recognition, a recognition for their work uh, in just a bit during our regular meeting. Also to committee chair Herb Rubin, whose wealth of planning experience and ideas has given has been so helpful. Also to our two council liaisons, Dave Jacobson and Bill Finucan from the first and second wards respectively. I really, really have to thank the three of these gentlemen along with all 30 members of the task force. You know, communicating to our public as we now implement some of these component pieces will be extremely important. And speaking of communication, we've worked hard to enhance our communications with our citizens. Our e-newsletter is now available monthly. Our alert DeKalb system is facilitated through phone, email, and text notifications. And we've been asking folks to get involved in refreshing and improving our website. And that process is now in its final stages of completion. Now we've got to have some fun though, don't we? Over the past year, we've seen a dramatic increase in Egyptian theater programming. The Music at the Mansion event staged by Mike Embry and the Park District had a sensational summer. And in September, the DeKalb Corn Classic 10K race, coupled with the Rotary Taste of DeKalb event, drew hundreds to DeKalb. Hats off to those who work so hard to assure that we indeed are having fun right here in our own community. I'm frankly not so sure that we have the best handle on how we promote DeKalb as part of the larger Northern Illinois community. And we're going to work with entertainment guru Mike Embry in the days ahead to see how we can continue to make DeKalb more attractive as a tourist and entertainment destination. Working with groups like the DeKalb County Convention and Visitors Bureau and our Chambers of Commerce, we can get it done. Speaking of engaging folks, we need to continue to develop DeKalb Taylor Municipal Airport as the regional facility it has become. The airport has completed its strategic plan. Now we need to develop ways to improve its revenue and widen its usage. We've already started discussions with potential partners. We intend to widen our conversations with state and federal legislators to research ways we can make the airport more self-supporting. And before we bring this picture show to a close, there are several folks who merit special attention. Able, professional, team player. Those terms, among many more, all describe our retiring fire chief. Eric Hicks spent nearly 30 years with the city. His staff and our citizens will miss his presence, but what he has accomplished is to leave his department in great shape. And we just can't thank Eric enough. During her time as a DeKalb resident and as a key leader at NIU over the past several years, we've come to know and respect Lisa Freeman. Now, as she assumes her first few months as Northern's full-time permanent president, I simply reiterate what I've said before, and that is the, the relationship between this city and the university has seldom been stronger. And we are so pleased to have Lisa as a key partner in improving life on campus and in the city of DeKalb. 
Finally, our last slide with four faces, some familiar, some perhaps not so much. All four have been appointed to key positions. Jeff McMaster on the left has earned his appointment as acting fire chief. Lynn Fazekas has taken her seat as our city clerk. In just a bit, I will ask Consul to approve my appointment of Joyce DePedja as our third ward alderman for a short time. Uh, Joyce will serve between now and the municipal elections later this spring. And finally, the other smiling face is that of Bill Nicholas, our recently appointed city manager. As I conclude tonight's State of the City, I ask for your continued support and involvement. In that regard, I fully realize that your government has not performed as well as many of you had expected it to do over the past several years. Frankly, a good share of the problems, especially those on the budgetary side, were the results of decisions that were made in this building a number of years ago. There is not one reason why we're wrestling with our budget in 2019. One can point to the state of Illinois' lack of fiscal control. The lack of a state budget for nearly three years certainly did not help. Locally, the drop in enrollment at NIU has had a cascading effect in our community, from a loss of sales tax dollars to this oversupply of rental properties and the correlating problems that substandard housing creates to the strains and the demands placed on our police and our fire departments. Frankly, we may, we have, we may have more than one 800-pound elephant in the room. Certainly one of these is the increasing burden of pensions. This community, as is the case with municipalities throughout this state, will not shy away from the commitments that we've made to our retirees. What we can do is to insist that measures be taken now, not tomorrow, but now, that address this pension issue. Public pension reform must take top priority in Springfield. Now this city's priority is to all work together to make this the kind of place where we can safely live, work, and raise our families. As a place that truly embraces this Consul's action this past summer to declare this a welcoming city, one that embraces diversity and rejects discrimination based on race or national origin. As a place where individual citizens can join forces with their elected leaders, perhaps as a member of one of our 14 boards and commissions, perhaps as a letter writer to our local newspapers, or as a contributor to a local blog site, maybe as a community volunteer to clean up the kish, to ring the Salvation Army bell, or to join a service club. We can all do our part to make DeKalb a better place. I will certainly try to do mine, not only as a private citizen, but as your mayor. Thanks for listening to this State of the City. I truly appreciate your attention. Thank you. Okay, uh, I don't know if there are any comments from the Consul as it relates to that State of the City. Uh, you didn't all stand up, so I figured that you probably <laughs> it wasn't that good, right? But no, seriously, uh, I, I appreciate this group. What a great group to work with. And, uh, and hopefully, you know, in that 30 minutes that I took for State of the City, 
uh, we were able to take a look at some of the things we did this past year and, and some of the things we need to do uh, looking forward. So with that, I would uh, call for a motion to adjourn our Committee of the Whole. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Alderman Jacobson, seconded by Alderman Verbeck. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Council begins at 6 p.m. Thank you. Safety.